What is up YouTube? Keith here from Cutlass Board Games and we're doing a follow-up devlog. So last time we made a tile laying game, this is something that I have not done any work previously in this kind of a category. Normally I'm a cards kind of guy. This is my first time trying to build something using only uh, physical tank tile objects. And it was a bit of a challenge. And the reason why we uh, cranked it all out and did all the prototyping and built everything in time was because last night was Tabletop Tuesday, a uh, Sydney developer meet and try out stuff day. And basically I, I got to um, get the game played by a bunch of other designers and get some really, really good feedback. And um, a lot of things went wrong. So we're gonna cover a lot of the things that went wrong um, and what kind of ideas that's given me and what kind of direction we're gonna go forward from here. The, the first one that is really interesting is that when you're designing a game, you kind of have an expectation of uh, what the player behavior is gonna be, what you think the average um, play style or choices or whatever, like it's gonna come from a very specific range. Now, um, the way that the game works is that you are building out a location by playing hex tiles and then after you've placed the tile you get to choose two of three actions. The three actions are clearing tiles to get resources, spending the resources to build buildings or caravans and then moving caravans. And the idea is that you would load up the caravans, the resources, and then you would try and deliver them. And just because it was a play test and we wanted to, I put a fixed goal on it. It's like, okay, first person to get 10 points um, delivered wins. Now, because I didn't mathematically specify some of the specific abilities, for example, when clearing, you can clear everything that matches the clearing um, restrictions. And the restrictions was if you have a pair of a location type, you can clear um, one of them, right? So if you have three, that means you can clear two of them and so on. Uh, and because you could do any number of them, there's no real pressure to do it early because so it uh, doesn't interact with the action economy in the same way. You, just, you only really need to do it one time. Um, but if you are doing it constantly, you're able to spend the resources early. And so in my head, what I had um, expected the gameplay to go was you would play the tiles, clear the stuff, build the caravan, build a bunch of roads, and then do two trips. And that was kind of how I planned out all of the gameplay time. Now, one of my players, we go into the first round, they have their first turn, they place the tile, they use no actions. I'm like, uh, okay, sure. I take my turn, next person takes their turn, comes back to this player, no actions. And this happens for a few turns. They just do nothing. I'm like, okay, surely they're gonna do something eventually. And what ended up happening was on uh, like a few turns in, like eight or something, they then cleared everything. They go, okay, I've got the two resources to build my caravan. I've now got 10 resources to put onto the caravan to now deliver. And now all I want to do is just spam the move action until I win the game. And I go, well, you can't use the move action twice because it's choose two of three. It's not spend two actions. And they're like, that's really annoying. Why would I ever want to do anything other than move right now? I'm like, well, I didn't anticipate this situation where you would have not done anything else the entire game. <laughs> right? Like, the idea was that you would go um, clear move clear build road so your next move action is uh, faster right um and so that that was a problem that was something that we had to figure out and deal with and, and this player who saw the game as exclusively a race exclusively as a pick up and deliver thing which kind of worked in two phases right and the first phase is playing all of the tiles efficiently to get the most amount of resources as fast as possible and then the second phase make your dude and rush to the finish line but what I saw it as was you are developing a landscape and while you're doing that, you are, you are ferrying resources back and forth because that's kind of what the end goal is supposed to be. 
but the exact prototype that I showed had this shortcoming where because I had stripped out some of the, the top end stuff and some of the extra complexity to assess the core mechanic, our player got it completely offshoot from what, what I had expected. And this was actually really important and really, really helpful. And then the feedback that I got from, from them about it was very, very helpful because there was two types of feedback there. One, the unexpected player pattern tells me what they think the game should be interpreted as, how they think the rules work, which when that deviates from my expectations, then I go, okay, I need to either narrow or allow or figure out how I want the player to actually be able to interact with these pieces in that way. And then the next thing is um, like what they said, how they felt afterwards. So they were like, well, obviously I wanted to just move a hundred times. So I was upset that I couldn't do that. Um, Cause I'm like, well, yeah, it's choose two of three and your each one of them is like as many as you can do. Cause like clear everything, build everything you could move as far as you can. And cause the caravan moves one space when moved. And if it hits a road, it gets to move an extra space. And if you have multiple caravans, the multiple caravans all move. And that was kind of, kind of the idea. And that didn't fit with the pick up and deliver aspects that they were doing. And it's my first time building a pick up and deliver. I obviously wasn't expecting that um, specific kind of a race style. I was um, expecting kind of a, like a, an upward sloping, um, as you build out your thing and you build out the infrastructure, your roads get better, your guys move faster. And so therefore building more roads and stuff will be more efficient. What I ended up doing, me personally, was I had a road on every second space so that I would go move, clear, move, and I get to build the next road, which is in front of me, and then move on the next turn. And I ended up winning, but only because I had the most straight line. Uh, each other player had to take one extra move because the shape of their location was different. Um, but we were all otherwise at pretty much the same speed, which I thought was kind of probably good, probably what I wanted. But if you watched the last video, I went over a pretty detailed how to play and how everything works. Now I want to get into what the feedback was and what I think should be changed. So we're going to switch over and I can show you what the components look like. So this is kind of what we got going on. That is the big pile of unsorted mess, but we have these different little uh, resource tokens. We've got uh, pelts here, trees here, and then ores. Um, and then this is kind of a little location that I built out so you get an idea of what it looks like. So if we were to clear all of this now, you would get all of them except one because you go, okay, this is a pair and then now this top one is gone. And then this is obviously a pair and then this top one is gone and then so on until there's only one left. So whenever you're clearing something, there's always one left. And then when you clear it, you put this one on top because then it's gone. And then if you build a road, you put the road on top of that spot. And then we have a, it's kind of like a tile shop. What we were doing was players would pick one of three. And so really the only player interaction at the time uh, was hate drafting. You, you would take the best thing or you would take something that you think maybe would benefit them better if it was kind of neutral to you or whatever. And there not being that much player interaction was one of the problems that I wanted to solve. But first thing I wanted to implement, two action points instead of selecting two out of three, which means that you could select move twice. And then each time it's, um, each of the actions are different. So it's clear all tiles of one type. So for example, with what I've got here, I could clear all of the stone, but I couldn't clear any of the forests or the prairies. That would have to be a second action or on another turn. Uh, and then the second one is build one structure. So I could build one road. I could afford 10 roads, but I can only build one road. And then the next one is move one caravan. So I could, if I have multiple caravans, I have to pick one of them and move it. Um, and if I double up, I could move with the one caravan twice, or I could move each caravan once. And depending on how your roads are built, that might that might change things. The other thing was that, at the beginning of the game, I said that where you're trying to deliver from is equally six spaces away from every player. And that was, that was like kind of an ethereal unknown thing. And then what we would eventually get is a marker that you would get to put on top of your city that says, yep, 
that's the place that we're trying to get to. That is the six spaces away. I'm now connected to it. But you have a unique one for each player so that the table doesn't have to be an exact size. Um, and that, that makes it a bit more freeform because, for example, the table we were playing on was quite large. Or you can see this one is a really rectangular. So the people at the long ends just would not, like, would have to have their board all the way up here in the middle somewhere. It would be awkward. Um, so, yeah, originally I was just like, we'll have nothing. But instead, having nothing was kind of confusing. So I think now we should just have something. This is just one of the CD starting tiles, but I would have something special for the specifically the one in the middle. Um, the next one comes in with the resources. To build a road, it is one wood and one ores, stone, or iron, whatever you want to call it, right? This is just like anything you could get from a mountain that would be useful. And then this is like any kind of... Um, livestock kind of thing. It could be sheep, it could be goats, it could be pelts, um, leathers, whatever. Right? So, a wood and a stone is a road, and a wood and a pelts is a caravan, but there's no stone and pelts recipe, which means that wood is hugely in demand. Um, and that can potentially be a problem. It means that you pretty much never want to be delivering wood, you want to be keeping wood to spend it and then delivering only the other two things. Um, and so the way to solve that problem is to um, find recipes for these two things to become. And one of the things that I wanted to add uh, into the game is destroyed buildings that you can repair to get an effect that show up uh, on the tiles in the market. So that would be an extra thing for you to determine, oh, this is really important, I want this one. Or this has got double prairie, I need the extra resources, I will take this. Um, and the buildings that I had in mind were stuff that lifted the existing restrictions, um, which we will come back to at the end. Uh, next thing was just delivering 10 things kind of sucked um, for two different reasons. The first reason, putting 10 things onto a caravan meant that you never needed a second caravan. Uh, and so that was kind of a problem. And so what we ended up doing instead was... Uh, instead of relying on the one caravan, we decided, well, how many trips should it be realistically? I think four is a good number. And so then uh, capping each caravan at being able to hold three things at a time means you have to do minimum four trips. Um, but what one of the players suggested is it should be only delivering resources of one type. Now that both... Um, matches up with the only clearing resources of one type, but also like thematically makes sense. Like you can't carry a whole bunch of logs and also livestock in the same cart. Like it, it doesn't quite fit up like really that well. So if you're taking three sheep with you, that's like your entire caravan. That's what the whole thing is. You're you're taking the three sheep. You're running it out to the the delivery spot, which is the central city, and then that's what you have to do. Now. Instead of just getting points for delivering 10 of anything, in, we wanted to also try out a, a marketplace kind of a thing where it's like, okay, I've just delivered three sheep. Three sheep are not as in demand now because they have three sheep. Stone and wood now are suddenly more valuable. So we would have like a sliding graph of a thing where whenever something gets delivered, the other things increase in value and that thing decreases in value so that the, the player two that delivers something um, would perhaps get more value if they happen to have a different type of good or something like that. And that would take a lot of time to mathematically balance so that it isn't like first player favored or second player favored or whatever. Um, so it would be interesting to see how that would kind of work out. And also I'm not trying to make that cards. So it would need to be like a board with pegs or something to like figure out how you could have the sliding marker and how that would all work. Um, also... Caravans disappear on delivery. So you would have to, like, you send the caravan there, it's done, it's done its job, it's at the city. It, like, like, does it walk all the way back? Does it teleport back? No. You have to build another one. Um, which I think really kind of fits into the, the original idea of the you've built a settlement. The idea of the settlement is to send resources back to the primary city. You've now build the caravan, it's going back to the city, the caravan is not going to come to you empty. Um, so I think that's kind of 
maybe what it should do, or maybe there should be a, like a, an additional raw, like you get maybe another hex tile to add to your grid or something like that, um, once you deliver something. Um, and then the building. The buildings is the last thing. So I came up with a few different ideas for what the building should be, but I think it shouldn't be too varied and too too wide and too crazy. I had one that basically meant that every time you move a caravan, it moves faster, uh, which is just like kind of you are always next to a road. And then you, it means that instead of, in my case, the first game that I played, I went um, not road, road, not road, road, so that every second action was going to be boosted. If you already have this thing, you would go, okay, uh, not road, not road, road. Oh, sorry, yeah, not road, road, oh, yeah, whatever. So, so then you, you can fit your free action in, and then you hit the road, which gives you the free move, right? Um, and then I wanted to have one that uh, upgraded how you would clear, so that you could... Uh, the one that I thought of was basically you could clear everything of one type. Um, so you would get one extra resource each time that you do it, but then you don't have something to match for that next time you're placing a tile. Um, which, I don't know, it's like kind of really good one time for each type of resource. <laughs> so I maybe that's horrible, maybe it's not. Um, maybe we should do something like um, you can clear every type of resource in one go so that your resource clearing is like more uh, action efficient. Because that's kind of the idea of what I want. I want the buildings to come in and make you slightly more action efficient so that wasting the actions on building them and the resources on building them isn't a, a waste. Like it pays for itself the more times it's used because it's a passive effect forever. Um, and then the last one I was thinking should be something that affects the, the marketplace in how much value the different goods get um, as another way to potentially be player interaction. But I didn't want it to be something that was like, oh, make this thing cost less right before they deliver it. Because that just feels a bit take that, but also just slows down the game for no benefit, which I don't, I don't really want to do. Um, but as you can see, that is that is a lot of ideas and um, uh, from just one test. We played the game one time and we got to see a lot of what could happen. We got to see a lot of problem solving and we got to see a lot of of ways that the game could end up, what we could do to fix things, what we could do to grow the idea and see what it could look like at that, that next complexity level, which is what I'm, I'm aiming towards. This was a stripped down version. I want to add a few more things on top of it to see what's next. Hit that 30 minute mark instead of the 20 minute mark that it's at and see how it grows from there. See what, what is next, play test that, come back, do it again. Did the things that we thought worked out, did they not work out, that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's why I think play testing is invaluable. Even if you think you've got barely an idea, if you think you've got half of something, scribble it on paper. Scribbles on pen and paper is much more professional than you think and is kind of standard. Um, most designers will happily play something like that because what it matters is the mechanics. The And then the scribbles is just to identify what the, the component is, really, so we can tell them apart. That's it, right? So the, the playtesting this time around has been invaluable. Um, the other game, the bomb diffuser game, Detonator. I also brought that. We also got to play some of that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to record a devlog for that one as well, but it got some really good feedback. More so making the puzzle more streamlined and a bit easier. It's not as hugely impactful as this game was. Um, but each time playing something has been really helpful. And being able to contribute to the other members of the community in giving feedback and discussions and talking about their games, I think is really important. So if you're a designer that's just starting out, then you should get involved in these kind of things. You should check out your local group. Like like Unpub does a lot of stuff. Like there's a lot of incubators that exist. Um, we've got our own local Sydney thing that does something. And all these things are worth checking out. Um, learning from other designers and helping them and playing lots of games. Like all this stuff really helps and contributes your design journey as, as it has for me. And that's kind of it. Um, hopefully this gives you some ideas. I'm trying to like normalize the design journey because I think anyone could do this really. But making it digestible from what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis hopefully helps you learn some stuff and see what's going on, give you some ideas about what you're doing. And I do a lot of other video content on this channel. Like I do a lot of Marvel Snap stuff as well um, through the lens of a designer and just a player so that you can get some unique 
angles on what's going on there and I do a lot of other regular board game content as well so if you're interested in some of that stuff do check it out I do spend a lot of time thinking about and trying to build stuff for YouTube so I do appreciate it our views help a lot likes and subscribes help a ton so I would appreciate it if you want to throw any of that my way and look I hopefully get to come back with some more good news later on and show you the evolution of this game in the future so I'll hope to catch you then